Siri, pause. My iPhone microphone. Well, guys, it's nearly 8 o'clock and I'm about to get out of bed. My voice is a bit funny today. I thought yesterday that I was truly going to wake up with a bad cold, but instead, which I'm quite happy about, all I've done is wake up with a, um, you know, croaky voice thing. It sort of sounds like going hoarse from screaming at a concert all night. It feels like that, even though I haven't been screaming at the concert. (laughs) I possibly might have been screaming in my sleep, but I don't know. Probably not. I'd have to get that checked, but there's no medical indication saying that I have to have a sleep study. So... And there's nothing happening with me to um, make me ask for a sleep study yet. So, hey, let's hope for the best that it's just a voice like throat thing and that's it. And I ain't feeling as bad as what I was expecting to feel. I ain't feeling like, oh, I'm sick, I'm dying, I'm, oh, nah. I just feel a bit... Like, oh, a bit la- lax, a bit laxy daisy is what you call it. A bit, ah, oh, need to just lie around. But not in such a horrible way that I can't just get up to have something to eat when I want something to eat. Um, you know, if I want to eat breakfast, I can. If I want to go out, I can. I just feel a bit, ugh, laxy daisy. It's like the um, run-down feeling that you get when you um, not like full-blown sick, just um, run down. And you know what I reckon it's from, hey? From all the stress of the, of the last couple of years dealing with Vision Australia and... Like, the support workers are okay, but management is really horrible. VA management is really terrible. And you get no support. Um, And I've gotten rid of VA, and my body's just gone, okay, you want to relax? It's time for me to pick up some germs. You know the saying, you... um, are really good and healthy when you're running around busy and when it's holiday time, it's time to get sick. You know that? Well, that's me, except that I'm not horribly crook. Um, I don't like having voice trouble or anything like that, but I would rather have a mild throat thing That'll just go away after a couple of days, three or four days, and then I'll be right. Then have a full-blown fucking illness. And I'd rather feel a little run down than just very horrible. It's just me. Um, And you know what else has dawned on me? All that no-saving money shit isn't going to happen anymore. I won't be spending any money on taxis. Unless I really absolutely have to, I won't be catching taxis. I hate catching taxis. I hate it. I can't stand taxis. Um... I'd rather catch the train, I'd rather catch a bus, I'd rather do anything except catch a taxi. I've got a travel pass there. Why do I need to spend money on transport when I can use free travel on the buses and trains with my um, travel pass? And I don't need to catch taxis. And with some companies, and I imagine it will be the same with guide dogs, if it's 78 cents per kilometre, 
then all they need to do is bill me for the payment that they drive. So if they drive 15 kilometres and it's 78 cents per kilometre, that's probably going to be like bloody $7.80 or something like that, maybe $10. Send me an invoice to pay them 10 bucks, and I can use my NDIS allowance to pay them $10, you know, to pay guide dogs the $10 for the transport. That would be the example. Which is pretty good for me. It's pretty good for me. Pretty good. Because then I don't have to pay for taxis. Why would I need to pay for a bloody taxi? They're too expensive. The other problem, Jonathan, Jono, as he calls himself, he... I don't have hardly anything to do with him apart from if I go to the park with one of the other neighbours, which I won't do that anymore because if I go to the park, Jonathan follows us there and has to talk to us. And I happen to be there. And, uh, what if I don't want to talk to Jono but he follows me and the other neighbour to the park? Like, it's pretty, pretty shit. You know, that he can force his way, excuse me, force his way with talking to people that don't want to talk to him. Um, yeah, it's utter shit. Um, anyway... That's just how he is, I think. Um, I try to avoid him at any cost. Um, He's a pest. He is a piece of shit, for one. And I told him yesterday that he's a piece of shit and he needs to stop being a bloody pest. Um, I just got up him. I told him off. I have the right to tell people off, so I do. I tell them off. If I don't like what's going on, I just tell them off. Um, And one of you guys knows who you are, but I'm still willing to help out this afternoon um, with what the task you need doing. I have not a problem helping you. It would have to be like after 3.30 though, because... or uh, 1.30. Yeah, that's right. It would have to be after 3.30 because... um, I've got the cleaning service um, coming to set up an agreement, which will be quite amazing, quite amazing. Um, Yeah. Isn't it funny I say that, though, because um, when I was stressing out over all these other things that were just crappy Vision Australia programs that I decided to join to see how it'd go, they were really shit because you couldn't do what you wanted to do. You had to do what the group wanted to do. You couldn't do what you wanted to do. If the group wanted to go to lunch somewhere, you had to go there for lunch. If they wanted to eat cinnamon toast, you had to eat cinnamon toast or go hungry or whatever. You could not do as you wanted to. You couldn't do as you wanted. You could never... You could never do as you wanted. It was all about the group. It was never about you. 
and I thought, what a load of shit. And then I'd come home thinking, oh, I did what everybody else wanted today. I'm doing what I want to do now. And then I'd never have any time for people because everything was all about other people. Everything was all about other people. And when I got home, it was no wonder I didn't want to have anything to do with, like, helping people or... um, spending time with people all the time because I didn't get to do anything for myself I didn't get to look out for me it was all about everyone else and by the time I got home I thought I'm sick of everybody else I'm sick of what everybody else wants I'm sick of what everybody else says I'm really sick of what everybody else thinks I've had enough of everybody's opinion I'm just going to do what I think what I want whatever And now, look at the contrast. I'm not thinking of everyone else all the time because I've left VA. I've got my last appointment on Thursday with VA. And then Guide Dogs Queensland is taking over. With them, you you think about everyone else as well, but then you get the chance at some point to do as you want to do as well. You do get the chance to think for yourself. Um, but yeah, um, at least now that I'm not with VA and I won't have any VA things coming up again after this week when it's over, when Thursday's over, I won't have any more VA. I won't have any more VA stuff at all. Um, I won't have nothing else with VA. Um, so not only will I get time to do whatever I want to do in my life, forget about everyone else for a while... I can hang out with people, I can have company people with people, but I can forget about them for once in a while. Not only can I do all of that with my life, I'll also have time for other people. Time to help other people. Time to do what other people are doing. Time to make the decision to do what other people want or to do whatever I want to do. Time to do all these other things. Time, which I didn't have before time which I now have, opportunities which I didn't have. It's amazing. So yeah, for the person I'm referring to, I hope they don't feel like they're pressuring me because they're not. I want to be helpful to them because it's my choice to be that way. Um, and like I'm saying, I choose to be helpful because I don't have all this stress on my shoulders that makes me less likely to be helpful. If I want to be helpful to someone but I'm really stressed out, I can't help them. I can't help someone and stress out about my life at the same time. I can't do it. But if I feel less stressed and and anyone says, can you help me with this, I'm struggling with that, and I say, why can't I help you then? And they say, oh, that'd be lovely. Well, that's probably because I don't have all this other shit in my life that is stopping me from helping people. I do have some stress, but it's not like horrible stress. It's just I have to wait for guide dogs to ring me. I have to set up service agreements. I'm stressed over that, but it's not like I want everyone to piss off because I'm stressed out. You know what I mean? It's not like I'm in such a stressed out mood that I just want everyone to ping off, don't want anyone to to bother me or put any pressure on me or do this or do that or otherwise. You know, it's not that sort of stress anymore, thank fucking God. Oh, thank fucking God. There's not all this other fucking stress to deal with. Like, if I'm stressing over signing service agreements, I'm not thinking of everyone else. I'm just stressing out over service agreements. 
and sometimes I have to say, oh, I can be helpful, but I can't work with you during the day. It'll have to be like in the morning or the afternoon because I've got things going for me during the day. I don't do it to put people off. It's just how my life is when I'm busy. I'm busy. And then when I'm able to help people, I, I do. Um, it's when I had all that stress laid on me about everything had to be about everybody else. And I'm like, no, it's not about everyone else actually. Fuck off. And now I don't have all that shit going on in my life and just like, ah. Yeah. I won't cave into demands, of course, and just go after absolutely everybody and never have any time for myself. I won't be doing that, but the occasional things that people ask for help for, I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll hang out while you do stuff and I can make sure you're all right. But otherwise, yeah, I have a life and uh, it isn't horrible and stressful anymore. So uh, I'm a lot more relaxed today. I can either get up and go out anywhere I like until one o'clock this half, except I can't because I'm waiting for groceries. So that's the thing that got in the road is shopping, groceries, online shopping and that. Who cares? Um, Whatever. Um, That, or I can just sit back and just relax and... So if I wasn't waiting for groceries today, I could just relax or go out. I could do anything I wanted to do. Anything I wanted. Um... I could do anything I feel like. And, uh not have to stress out over what does everybody else want to do today I I can just worry about what do I want to do and if I want to include other people then I think about what other people are doing and do what I want to as well but if I don't include other people that's fine as well it just depends on it depends on what I'm doing where I'm going But my main point of this argument isn't about other people. It's about I don't have to stress out over having to go to Vision Australia, go to the walking group, I can't do what I want to do, blah, blah, blah. Which sucks, you know. Um, Yeah, it just really honestly sucks. So, it's like I've heard a few people at Guide Dogs saying, oh, I used to be with VA, they weren't helping me much, so I dropped them. I'm like, yeah, same here, they're not helping me much either, so I dropped them. I wouldn't recommend VA to anybody. I would never recommend VA to anybody. Ever. Ever.
Anyway, Vision Australia has a lot to explain for. Um, the management of Vision Australia tells a lot of lies. They make up a lot of shit that isn't true. You know, they'll tell you, oh, one minute, oh, we can do night outings for you. And the next thing they're telling me, no, we only do night outings if you join our groups for outings and just go on the night outings. They won't do one-on-one support. I'm like, why do you lie to people when they join and say you do one-on-one support, even night outings? You lie to them, but then... When people have joined, you finally tell them the truth and say, no, we don't do night outings as one-on-one support. And the other thing with VA is they start out great. They start out supporting you really good. If you need to go to an appointment, you get taken to an appointment. After a few weeks to maybe a couple of months, they get really slack and you pre-book ahead of time for appointments, and VA just says, no, we're not taking you to that appointment. What if it's a really important appointment? I booked three months ahead. I booked an appointment in April for an eye appointment in July, an eye specialist appointment in July this year. I made the booking in April. What happened three days before the appointment in July? I got a call from Vision Australia with a cold-hearted, callous staff person saying, we have bad news. You won't be able to go to your eye appointment with this, um, you know, support worker because there's no one available. Goodbye. There was no compassion. There was no sympathy. There was no oh, look, we're sorry to tell you that, you know, we don't have anyone available for eye appointments. Is there any other ways we can help you since this is an important appointment? They don't care about any of that. They had no sympathy. They had no consideration or concerns. It was just, oh, we have some bad news to tell you. There's nobody available to take you to your eye appointment. Sorry. Goodbye. And I'm like, oh, stuff you then. Stuff you. I reckon stuff you. I reckon totally stuff you because, you know, it's, you know, you don't just ring someone up and have no friggin' sympathy for their situation and just tell them, sorry, you're not having any support. They've done this to a few other clients of theirs. They've done this to a few other people, which isn't very good. Hmm. Anyway, whatever, it's over. I'm not with VA. Um, so, yeah, if anybody wanted to talk to me about people that go to VA obviously not on recording of course I wouldn't want people to talk to me while I'm doing a recording about people at VA I'd have to um, before I put the recording up on YouTube I've got to cut all those bits out anyone that talks about stuff on the recording I have to cut that I have to cut all of that out so that no one can tell they only hear the bits of recording that I want to um put up on YouTube not everything that I don't want people to know um 
the other option is making recordings unlisted and I do make some of them unlisted it means that those recordings don't go into the public viewing section the public viewing section um, doesn't get my unlisted recordings so yeah um, that's how I deal with that but otherwise, if I'm putting something up on YouTube publicly, I end up having to cut bits and pieces out of some recordings. Um, but yeah, um, if anybody just wanted to generally talk about what goes on at VA and what people are like and what people are up to, you could safely do so because it's not as if I'm going to be talking to most, of, if not all of those people ever again. So whatever anyone says to me isn't going to go back to the people at VA because I don't go there. Like, I don't go and stop there to say hi to people. I don't go there to do any of their programs. I don't rock up to VA just to say, hello, how's everybody going? Like, I don't do that. I don't have anything to do with VA anymore because I don't want to go to VA like now, if I want to send books back to VA, I've got to go to the post office and post them back because I don't want to go to VA just to drop off some books. You know, why would I want to do that for? So, yeah. Um, if people were were to tell me anything about VA um, nobody from VA would ever find out because yeah I just don't have nothing to do with VA nothing nothing at all um There are some things I can't mention on this recording unless I make it unlisted and only um, give this recording to people I don't that I do trust. So if I do want to say anything, I'll be making another unlisted recording and only sending it to people I can trust not to tell everybody else about it. But right now, I won't do an unlisted recording. Um... But yeah, there's some things that are a great concern to me about some of the clients at VA. Some things are a big concern for me. Some things that I hear, some things that people do, some things that people have said to me. There are some things that are of grave concern to me that make me feel that, oh, I don't want to be in this situation anymore. Um, I'm actually glad that I'm out of a situation that I got myself into it wasn't a really bad situation it just um, it required me paying more money than was necessary in some taxi trips that's all um I and another person would pay for a taxi to our separate places and then I thought to myself wait I'm paying for a taxi to go from their place all the way back to my place and it's going to be more dearer than it costs for the person to go from Vision Australia to their place is cheaper than for me to get a taxi from their place so get a taxi from Vision Australia to said person's place then take the taxi after they pay for their trip to their place then I'm paying for a trip from their unit from their house their unit to my unit I'm like why would I pay a taxi fare to go from somebody's place to my unit when I don't even live at their place and I don't even go there to visit them for more than 
two minutes, you know, to let them out of the taxi and I don't even go in to visit them and yet I'm still paying to go from their unit all the way back to my place. I'm like, why did I put myself in that situation? Because then the next week we go to my unit and then the person has to pay from my unit all the way back to their place. I'm like, why would they need to pay for a taxi from my unit when they're not even coming in to visit me? I think that's a pretty dodgy situation. As far as I'm concerned, it's pretty dodgy. It works well in a sense, but it's dodgy because then you're paying to leave each other's places without ever going in. Like, what's the point in doing that? My logic, in my mind, would have been to take someone to their place, drop them off. Then when I'm at my place, I pay for that whole trip. The next week I would have gone to my place, dropped me off. The other person goes back to their place and they pay for that whole trip. If we took turns paying for a trip from Vision Australia each week, if one person paid for their trip one week, the next week they didn't pay, so I would pay, and then the next week I would pay instead of them, and the next week they pay instead of me. So if we had taken turns to pay for that taxi trip every single week, one week I pay, another week the other person pays, right? That would have been more logical. Drop me off at my place, the other person pays for their trip. Drop that person off at their place, I pay for the trip when I go back to my place. That would have made a lot more logical sense to me. But, yeah, some people just don't know how to think through things for a lot of different reasons, which I won't go into. Some people just don't know how to think through things logically. I try to help people, but no, 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 I don't know much. What would I know? What would I know? I must be stupid or something. I must be stupid. But anyway, that situation is now over. Um, there's another bad situation with another person that drives me insane. They don't go on the outings with me, but, you know, the walking excursions and that. Oh, there's one of the clients that knows this other person that does go on the walking excursions. But I, um, this other client that, so some of these people on the outings that I go on are associated with this other person. And I don't get along with this other person at all. And then the people that I have spoken to stir up trouble for me by talking behind my back when I can hear them. They will talk to this other associated client in my hearing about me without including me in the conversation. They can't wait till they're at home. They can't wait until they are somewhere else to talk about me without me being there to defend myself. Because if I'm in front of someone and they're talking about me, I will defend myself. I'm there, I'll defend myself. I'll say something like, oh, hello, I hear that you are there, how are you going? But when people are deliberately talking to me nicely on an outing, right, Then when we get back to Vision Australia, they then talk about me to these other clients in a nasty way and laughing and talking about me and laughing while they're talking about me with no intention of including me in the conversation. They just talk about me like I don't exist behind my back when I can hear. That is like absolutely offensive talking to me nicely, asking me how I'm going and then 
in the next breath, turning behind my back and talking in my earshot about me and laughing and carrying on at some other clients as if I don't exist. And what do the staff at Vision Australia do? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. If this behaviour had occurred at Guide Dogs, staff would be onto it in like five seconds asking, is there a problem with you guys? What's going on? Um, you don't need to treat each other like that. If I see this happen again, I'll be separating all of you guys and making sure you know this won't be happening again. And then that's it. The conversation moves on. Life moves on. No one gets into lots of trouble. I'm all right. Everyone else is okay. And there's no shit going on again. What you don't know is that I can't stand most clients at Vision Australia. I don't like most of them. There's two of them that I do like. I do like two clients, but I don't like the rest of them. They're all negative. They whinge. They talk rubbish. Like, you know, not even intelligent conversations half the time. They talk about other people for one. And the VA staff don't want to do anything about that. The other thing that I have a problem with VA is that when I defend myself, I get in trouble for defending my rights, sticking up for myself, protecting myself, talking for myself, okay? And I don't listen, I don't care if I get in trouble because it's my life and I'll do whatever I like with my life. Now, they wonder why I am so abrupt with them when I say I'm leaving because my NDIS hours is covered by other support agencies now they wonder why I'm so uncompassionate really abrupt really unfriendly they wonder why I'm so unfriendly to them because they've done nothing but treat me like dirt that's why done nothing but treat me like dirt Other clients are treated like dirt as well. Other clients are definitely treated like dirt. But if you defend yourself, you don't get shown any sympathy. You don't get shown any um, um, any kind of leeway as to let's investigate this issue so we can help you. Nothing gets investigated. Nothing. Nothing gets investigated properly. At least with Guide Dogs Queensland, if you end up in difficulties, the complaint gets investigated, everything gets sorted out, you get to move on with your life. Everybody doesn't get into trouble, only the people that deserve to get into trouble. You don't get to find out why someone gets into trouble. You don't get to find out. It's like I know a couple of people who got into trouble from guide dogs and it never got back to me. All that happened is I didn't like the way I was being treated. I didn't like the way I was being spoken to. I didn't like all of the discrimination and shit like that. <sighs> Clients that I had problems with 
um, they got into trouble. All that happened with me was that I um, kept on complaining, kept on telling these clients, two clients that are in, you know, not with guide dogs, not with guide dogs. One of them possibly doesn't go with guide dogs anymore. The other person, I don't know. I don't, I don't have a clue. But anyway, I kept on complaining because the clients would complain at me about different things. And I just said, well, look, I'll do whatever I want to do in my life. I don't have to do what everybody else thinks. It's my decision how I live. I can't always afford to pay for things. I can't always do this, that and the other. Anyway, I kept on complaining. Um, The client got into big trouble. Another client that I know of, um, I complained about the way he spoke to me, about the way he, you know, mistreated me. Um, he isn't coming back to some of these guide dogs programs anymore because of the way he treats people. I'm like, you know, you're not there to give people medical advice. You're there to learn things. You're not there to give medical advice. And anyway, I didn't like what was going on and I kept on complaining and something was done about it. The other client, he was a pest and I did something about it. I didn't just let it continue. What does Vision Australia do when you make complaints? Nothing at all. Absolutely nothing. Vision Australia gives people jack squat where support is concerned. Jack Squat. I would never recommend Vision Australia to anybody. And I find it funny how the people who go to guide dogs, for the most part, are generally a lot easier going. Like, yeah, you do end up in arguments with people because it happens everywhere. But the way things are dealt with at guide dogs is heaps better. It's a lot better. Heaps better. Anyway, I'm not going to VA anymore, so I don't really care. I don't care at all. Don't give a shit. I'm not going to V8. There are some things I hear from there that I'm like, it's a whole heap of drama. It's a whole heap of crap. You know? Why would I want to hear about it anyway? It's all just negative shit. Gee, when I go to guide dogs, I meet up with people who want to socialise and have gatherings and go out and talk, have a great time, talk about dramas in passing, but they're just a passing memory, they're not something that, that's right, we can be negative all day, not like that at all, which is fucking awesome, really, it's honestly good, you know. honestly really good. Um, minus 33.94 minus pause minus iPhone microphone speech off. Sorry about that I had to do a very quick loop break and I had to pause. Anyway I'm back. So um yeah I uh I think guide dogs is way better with their clientele and how they deal with situations and all that. So, and then I've got a community support worker saying, well, 
It's up to you do up to you what you do with your NDIS plan. You can go to whichever agency you want to go with. Um, and I'm like, well, why would I do that when you guys have done nothing but try to help me out? And, uh, the support worker went all quiet, like, oh, well. I'm like, okay, I'll put another agency in in case I need them. You know, like, if Guide Dogs isn't available, another agency will help me. That's what you generally do. You get a couple of care agencies that will help you with one if one is not available, another one can help you. Uh, and that's a pretty good idea. That is a pretty good idea. But in saying that at the same time, why should I have to get more than one care agency? Why should I have to do that? So, yeah, I, uh, I'll keep guide dogs and obviously if I find another good care agency, I'll go with them. They're few and far between. Everybody says, oh, try this agency, try that agency. Well, most agencies want you to have a mental health problem. You can't go with the agency unless you have a mental illness. Um, you got to have a mental illness or you can't get any disability support from them unless you're mentally ill as well. I think that is pretty stupid to be making those policies. Like, why do you need a mental illness? just so you can have disability support. Like, why would you need a mental health condition just so that you can get disability support? See, nobody cares. Nobody actually cares enough to help anybody. I know what people are like. I know what people are like when they treat, when they, you know, are like with blind people. You know, um... You don't get all the help that you want, that you need, let alone what you want, because people just don't want to care about anybody. So I'm like, yeah, whatever. You know, whatever. You know, to me, if people have to expect you to have a mental health issue as well as a disability, or they don't want to know you, something's not right somewhere. Like, why do you need to have a mental health condition just to get help with your other disabilities? Like, 
if you're blind, none of the organisations want to know you because you don't have a mental health illness, so nobody wants to know you. Nobody cares if you have a mental health condition. Nobody actually cares if, I mean, nobody actually cares if you have a physical disability or a sensory disability. If you don't have a mental health condition, no one actually gives a shit about you. I just find it pretty bloody shocking that nobody actually cares about anybody. I just think it's horrible that nobody cares about anybody. It is horrendous. So if you want a care agency, you've got to have other problems, not just blindness or broken leg or something wrong with you that's physical. You've got to have other problems or they don't want to know you. Just had to throw a cereal box in the bin. So yeah, if you want another care agency, you've got to have a psychiatric problem, or they don't want to have a bar of soap to do with you. They don't. I know what people are like. My saying is, I know who's blind and who's not. I know who's blind and who's not. Another box of stupid neutral rainfall.
Speak YouTube. YouTube. Fight YouTube. Stop. Pause. Stop. Pause. Button. So yeah, someone Minus else 22. is getting this box of new terrain. Notification. YouTube. Fight. Stop. 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 Pause. Minus. Pause. Button. Minus. Pause. Minus. iPhone. Microphone. Speech off. So I'm going to make me coffee. And then I'm going to take the new terrain box up to the neighbors. Because I don't tell. Um, I don't need it. Need any of it, really. I don't want it. I've already got the picture around here, it's going to last for ages. It's going to last for fucking donkey's years. Mess being left around because then when I need to put something there later, then it's clean. You don't have to worry about wiping it over again later. <coughs> My throat and chest feels like, why are you not irritated by some bug thing in the video? What's wrong with me today? It's not horrendous, it's just like. <coughs> <laughs> Having a drink, and I'm taking this box of YouTube grains up to this tart of a neighbour. I think this bloke's a tart, and uh, if I don't want something, he can have it because, <clears throat> you know, he just eats anything and everything, so. The way some people may see it is why should I have to give anyone anything? Well, it's my life and I do whatever I want to do. I'll do whatever I like. If I don't want something, I'll give it to anyone I want to give it to. That's my choice. Take my coffee to the table. I've just taken the box of Nutri-Grain that I don't need. I don't need the Nutri-Grain. I've got a container of Nutri-Grain right there that's going to last me for a month. Could last less time, but it's most likely going to last a month. Why would I want a new box of Nutrigrain there when I've got a full container? Like if I'm running out of it, then I'll buy myself another box. <coughs> I've had that box of Nutrigrain there now for about four, five, six weeks. You know, I've had that Nutrigrain there now for a long time. For a very long time, and I don't need that Nutri-Grain. I don't 
I really don't need the new blank. If I did, I would have bought a box <laughs> recently. That would have been me done. It would have been me out the road. Um, so yeah, if I don't need it, I don't keep it. I don't keep what I don't need. detergent up there, up on the sink, because I mean to do that. Yeah, the new bottle of detergent just takes up space in the stupid bloody... Oh, yeah, it's back all over the bottle. Soak or something. Oh, that's fixed. It's fixed, that's the right. Okay. Okay. breakfast and coffee here and I don't even have to worry about anything today. 
I can't believe it. Oh, I can just sit back and relax. <coughs> I know next Tuesday I'm going out. I won't be getting shopping for next Tuesday because I'm going out. Um, I'll probably use Coles next week because I love, I absolutely love their macaroni cheese bake. I love it a lot. So yeah, I'll probably get some macaroni cheese back from Coles next week. I find the Woolworths tuna mornay that I've tried. It's okay, but there's not enough sauce in it. There is not enough sauce. So when you're eating it, it's got almost like a dry taste. It, it's nice, but it's, it's like they didn't put enough sauce in it. <coughs> when they made the tuna more name. Minus 34.40227 dB. Minus 23. Stop, stop, pause, button. So yeah, I probably, well, I won't get their tuna Mornay again for a while. Well, I can excitedly and contentedly wait for my grocery shopping to arrive and do more cooking. Cooking. Yep. Not believe myself I can actually cook. Oh, I can't believe it. Um, yeah, I'm just excited that things are changing for the better. I'm so excited. I've got good OT lessons. They say I barely need help and it's like, well, how come I keep asking you to come around? How come when you're not here I do something wrong? And then I can't take a photo to show them what I did. So I have to explain to them what happened. And they're like, well, 
didn't do much when we were here and it's like well what happened when you weren't here then <laughs> when occupational therapist isn't there although I am instructor they don't see when I struggle a lot <coughs> If there's one thing that really pisses me off, if while this stuff wasn't happening five or six years ago, it would have made my life easier. And in Cairns, there were some lovely people that tried to help me to get my life on track with my health there. I kept saying, no, I'll be right. No, I'll be fine. Imagine if I got started on a healthcare program properly before I moved here, I don't think I'd be suffering. I don't think I would know what suffering really is. I don't think I'd understand what suffering really truly was if I got a healthcare program started properly before I left to go to Brisbane in 2016. I don't think I'd understand suffering. I would have been hearing about dramas going, what are you all talking about? Oh well, things happened. I didn't like it. Didn't like what happened. I feel like I'm being pressured into trying other things and I'm just like, no, I'm okay as it is now. But imagine if I started a healthcare program back when. I don't think I would understand what suffering would have been. I don't think I would have understood nothing. Um, God, what was I going to say? Uh, God, what the hell was I going to say? Well, that's right.
I'm just so happy I've got everything sorted now. <coughs> My bloody doctor's probably going to be sitting there going, oh, yeah, what's actually happening? Minus three. Pause. Still Button. working. I don't know if it's still recording. Sometimes my phone does that. It'll be recording and I'll be like blaring on for ages and then only to find out that it's not recording. Ah. Damn it. Anyway, it's still recording. Um. So, I reckon that since leaving VA, I, uh, well, I have my last appointment on Thursday and then after Thursday there won't be any more uh, service agreements um Um, so yeah, since totally getting rid of VA, they'll be gone. Once Thursday's appointment's over, they're gone. Um, <clears throat> oh God. Yeah, once Thursday's appointment's over, 
I will never be ringing up VA ever again. I mean, I'll be dropping books off. Get rid of them all. Um, <clears throat> I uh, will never have anything to do with them ever again after the way they've treated me and a few other people. Yeah, there are, there's one person I can't stand at VA, can't stand them, but you don't just treat everybody badly just to attack one person. Not when you're not in like, when you're not in a life-threatening or a dangerous situation. You know, if you go after a couple of people when only one person does something wrong, then then yeah, um, that's just a load of shit. It's like what you do to babies. When kids fight, you go after both of them. Well, you don't do that to grown-ups. I know someone at this complex who's like that. I won't be saying who they are. I'm sure people can figure it out. They treat people like babies as well. And I'm not happy to be treated like a baby. I don't believe in the way these, some of these people handle everybody. Just leave us alone and mind your business is what I say of this person. Anyway. If we go to the communal area, that gives no license for this person to control people, to micromanage people, to control what happens in the communal area. You don't do anything unless people are doing something really bad. You know, if you have to be offended, if this person has to be offended because there's a lot of noise going on and it's during the day, they have a problem and they need to get a life. They need to get a life or get a new job or something because I don't tolerate that shit from bloody anybody. Anyway, um, I'm happily waiting for my groceries. Um, I am... in a feud, like a furious (coughs) state with this person. It's not furious where I'm furious with the rest of life. I'm just, this is what's going on and this person won't be getting any of my airs and graces ever again. Apart from, hey, um, I'm glad you like how I'm looking after my unit. Yeah, it's fine, thank you. You know, when it comes to a rental property, you've got to show some respect and let people know that you're still enjoying renting this unit, still enjoy looking after this unit, you still enjoy putting in all the effort to keep it from breaking down, you're happy to keep ringing up to get repairs done. Show some respect, you know, you're renting in a property um, managers need to know that you're actually okay with your unit whether they have a bad attitude or a good attitude or whether they don't have any respect for most things in life when it comes to tenants but they you know may show some respect in regard to if you're looking after your unit they're happy and that's all I need I don't need a fancy good terms relationship with every bloody landlord I ever meet you know so long as I'm happy and he's he or she's happy that I'm looking after the units if we don't like each other otherwise too bad whatever just because I don't like a person doesn't mean that I'm going to go and trash the property just to get back at them because I'm not living in a property to get back at anybody I'm living here to enjoy it and to entertain myself and to keep looking after it because it's fun 
you know, people think, oh, I don't like my landlord, I'll just trash the property and leave. That doesn't fix anything. That doesn't help anyone. If you don't like the landlord, don't talk to them. Just keep looking after the property and make them feel respected that you still like your unit. That's all you need to do. You don't have to get back at them in any way. You just say, oh, well, I like you for renting me this unit. It's the best ever. But otherwise, ta-da. I don't like your attitude. See you later. But, hey, if you want to know how I'm going, I'm doing well, thanks. And how are you? (laughs) You know? And, yeah, I'm not going to stop looking after your unit because I like it. It's fun. It's great fun. And then you clean it up and you lock it up and you go out and you don't have to look after it when you're away because it's clean and it's well looked after. It's locked up. It's not being disturbed. There's nothing happening when you're away, so you don't really have to look after the unit for as long as you're away, just as long as you pay rent and don't abandon your property. Well, um, well, I have to write a letter to prove that I'm not abandoning the property. Let them know when I'll be back. Like, I could leave for four weeks. And then I can write a letter saying... I've been away for four weeks, I'll be away for another two weeks. See you in two weeks' time. Um, And then come back and just say, yeah, I needed a six-week holiday from here, but I'm happy, I'm all right. Bye, see you later. (laughs) Have a good one, you know. (coughs) Goddamn throat. I guarantee my doctors will say, it's just a virus, it's just what happens every year in summer. People get sick when the spring changes to summer, it's just typical. And I'll be like, yes, it's not something I never knew about. It's not something I don't already know. Just relax. <laughs> but yeah, I digress. I'm waiting for my... Speech off. I'm waiting for my groceries and then I'm going to wait for a service cleaning person to come around, a cleaning service manager. Then I have to text or even ring a, I'll just text the support worker. Um, Oh, well, Excuse me, but I can't avoid certain things sometimes. Anyway, um, my throat ugh, feels like it's ugh, like it's got a lump in it. Oh, yuck! Don't tell me I've got to take those menthol and vitamin C lollies again. Oh, Jesus, they're strong. If you keep taking them for more than a day, they get really strong. They accumulate in the system. Oh my God! Oh God! Anyway, um, I'll text this support worker uh, and uh, and then (coughs) 
oh damn it they're gonna have to ring me to set up a service agreement for a support worker first though oh shit crap that's what they have to do hmm bugger me maybe i'll just wait for them to call me then i'll then i'll text the support worker because once they set up a service agreement then it can all be set sorted and i can text him and then he can uh, set up some times and start the support worker routine again within the next couple of weeks yay I'm just so glad that I use Woolies sometimes and Coles sometimes because Coles has things there that I really like. Coles has things that Woolies doesn't have. Woolies has things that Coles doesn't have. There are some products I prefer from Coles and some I prefer from Woolworths. Like, I prefer to get fruit and veggies from Woolies. If I'm at the greengrocer's shop, I'll get veggies and fruit from there, but... If I stuck between, if I chose between Coles and Woolworths, I would get my fruit and veg from Woolies, and my meat and that, and get other things from Coles that I like that are not so good at Woolies. So it really depends on what I'm looking for. There are some things I don't like from Woolworths. I have to get it from Coles. There you go. The truck's here. The Woolworths truck is here. You can hear it. Well, I don't think you can, but you should be able to hear it. Um, the Woolies truck will be here in a minute, and you can um, you can um, hear the person doing the groceries. You can hear the person putting the groceries on the bench.
Get it straight, that is not what I'm trying to say, right? Okay, what I'm trying to say is, and if you get confused, for those who can comment to me by text or face to face or whatever, tell me. If you get confused, tell me. I can explain it better. Don't go away, you don't No! So, what I'm trying to say is, since I haven't been sharing food with people all the time, meaning since, I'll just say, I'll explain if I have to, but I'll just say, since I haven't had people demanding food from me and expecting me to cook meals and expecting me to keep on making coffee and all this crap all the time, I have had less dishes to clean up. I've had less to do with my kitchen, amazingly enough. And I'm really happy about that. Um, <coughs> oh, well, maybe that truck wasn't the groceries after all. But, obviously, if it's just a... Uh, Let's have company and if I cook a meal for someone, I'll cook a meal for them. That's fine. It was all the demanding and continuously having to make sure people had food. That was what I didn't like. Not the occasional, I'll talk with neighbours, then I'll cook dinner, and if they have dinner with me, that's fine. Because that's great. That's excellent. I may only have to do a couple of loads of dishes at night time because of neighbours eating with me, what, a couple of times a week or less, you know? But when people are just coming in, oh, I need tea, I need coffee, I want some cheese biscuits, cheese and crackers, I want this, I want that, I want blah, 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 over and over again, every day of the week. I'm just thinking, Okay, if you want something, bring your own stuff and have it here. Or don't keep coming over and demanding food, like just bring your own stuff. Um, in saying that, obviously if I'm talking to people and I happen to make dinner and they happen to eat dinner with me, that's fine. But if it's like a demand where, oh, I, you, you, I need you to cook a meal for me, I need food, I need water, I need all these other things because I'm here with you and I need you to do all these things. It's like, really? Is that right? Is that right? Is it? You know? If anyone gets confused by my discussion, can they tell me later? Bruce. Twitter or face to face, tell me if there's anything confusing um, that I've said or whatever. Because I don't want people to be left in the lurch saying something and the next day they're like, oh, I know what you meant. Sorry about yesterday. I thought you meant and then I thought about it and oh, yeah, that's right. You know, we honestly want to help you and sorry for yesterday's thing. Like, Hey, if you get confused, tell me. And no, it's not just a straight yes or no. Oh, no, I don't want to cook for anyone anymore. Yeah, I'll cook for everyone. It's not as straight, as easy as, as yes or no. Every single time I want to cook, it depends on factors. It depends on a lot of things. Yes, I want to cook for people. No, I don't want to cook for people on demand every single time <laughs> okay if there's any confusion tell me don't say something and then the next day you're like oh that's right i should have asked you to clarify just ask me anyway because if you understand that's great if you don't you don't need to spend two days going there thinking why did i say this why did i say that when i didn't mean to you know cause offence, you really meant this instead of what I thought you meant, like, don't take two days to 
not don't take two days to realise what I've said. Just um, just ask me as soon as you realise you're confused so that you're not having to worry for two days about what I might have said or meant or whatever. For anyone that would like to ask me any questions if they're confused, that's what I'm getting at. Don't um, mull over it for so long only to realise, crap, I don't know what you're saying, you know. Um, like, even if, if you were to say something and then say, is this what you're trying to tell me, rather than, you know, you're just saying it's like, well, yeah, okay, that's, I suppose that's what I'm trying to say, but anyway, we'll talk about it later. And next week you're like, oh, I'm sorry, I, I think you meant this, didn't you? And it's like, oh, yes, actually, but anyway, I didn't know how to explain it. Like, just fucking say something so that I'm like, oh geez, didn't explain that properly, or um, oh okay, well, what I mean is, or, or something of the like. Because otherwise I'm worried for a whole week thinking, not that it should matter, I mean, you know, but I do worry thinking that, crap, I haven't explained something properly and I might have offended some people who are listening, but I never meant what people thought I meant or said or whatever. So I've offended people, if they only understood me they'd be okay with what I said, they wouldn't be offended, they'd be understanding. Or like more um, fair enough, you know, something like that. <laughs> so if there's something you get worried about me saying, you can obviously say something and then say is that what you're trying to say? I mean, I'm either going to say yes or kind of, but can I explain it more? <laughs> or no, that's not what I'm trying to say. Like... <laughs> oh, God. No, but I know what... And I'm not mentioning names, but I know what some people are trying to get at, you know. It starts out fine, we won't eat meals. Then it's, oh well, I think I'm starting to realise you meant that we can have meals, you know, you just got to have your own limits. Oh, that's fair enough. Honestly, if you want us to help you, just let us help you. Look, you know, if there's any confusion, just say something straight away. To clarify things about accepting help and not expecting payment and all that. Okay, I guess I didn't explain myself. Oh, I tried to explain myself properly, but sometimes I just can't, bloody, I don't know, maybe I can't get the words out, maybe I say something thinking it was clear, but it's not. Um, sometimes I, if people offer to buy me a meal, no, I don't want a meal. Sometimes I just don't want a meal. Sometimes I'd rather pay for it myself because I know I've got the money to pay for it, so look, I appreciate your offer to pay for a meal, but please, I want to pay for it this time. I don't want you to pay for it, it's not because of rejection or I don't like someone or anything, it's just because I don't want you to pay for the meal. If I wanted you, I'd let you. And if you insist long enough, if you insist, whoever's listening, if you insist long enough and I just cave in and go, oh, yeah, I suppose, why don't I let myself get spoiled, you know? It happens sometimes, things happen. Friends will say, well, um, I haven't bought your meal for a long time. It's like, oh, well, don't worry about it. I don't really want you to pay for all my meals. Then they, you know, could say, well, I'm the one offering to pay for it. It's like, well, it is my choice to accept or not, but yeah, okay, why not? That's what, you like helping people, you like paying for meals, fine, do it, you know, but I'm not gonna expect you to do it every time. Just pay for it then if that's what you really feel led to do because you just enjoy buying meals, we'll do it. I'll let you. I mean, I don't want you to pay for a meal, but yeah, pay for it. Okay, <laughs> thanks. I'll let you pay for it. I don't have to worry about spending my money. Fine, whatever. <coughs> and then other times someone will say, can I buy your meal? And it's like, yeah, I think so, thanks. Um, I just want, I don't know, whatever they are getting, I'll just tell them what I want. And I'll literally say, look, don't get me a full meal. I'm not going to have, 
a full red rooster meal, I'll just get a burger. And, you know, I'll just say, you yeah, know, I don't really want, want chips with the burger. Like, you know, especially if someone insists on paying for a whole meal that I could have, sometimes I'm just like, nah, I don't want the whole meal. I could pay for it if I really wanted a, a, a proper, you know, red rooster meal or something. But, yeah, whatever. Um, just get me a burger and a drink. You know, that's all I want. Um, but yeah, for the people saying, look, just don't worry about it. If we pay for meals, we pay for meals. It's what we want to do. We're not going to make you pay us back. Well, okay, but I'm one of these people that does try to pay people back. <laughs> and I'm not going to expect you to say like a broken record. Every time you buy a meal, don't pay me back. It's not, like, it's not as if I don't already know that I'm not expected to pay you back. For anyone that would buy a meal, it's not as if I don't already know that I don't have to pay them back. Unless they ask me to. I already know that. <laughs> So like, it's up to everyone else at the end of the day. If they want to buy me meals, buy them. I'm not going to just, sometimes I'll say no if I truly don't want to eat. I'm just going to say no thanks, I don't want a meal. I'll just say it honestly. Yeah, okay, I want something for dinner, I'll just have chips, I'm not that hungry. I'm just going to be honest. And like, if you do happen to buy a drink and I don't want the drink, I'll just put it in the fridge for later. It can't be that hard. It cannot be hard to put the drink in the fridge that I don't want and I might want to have it tomorrow or the next day. It cannot be difficult. <sighs> um, the only exception is like when you buy things from a crepe shop or whatever, their drinks can be in like an open cup setting where the lid's on a cup. I don't really like to leave those in the fridge for too long because then they go yuck pretty quick. So I'd be careful with those, you know. Um, but if anyone gets me drinks in a can or a bottle, just who cares if I put it in the fridge? Whatever. <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah. Um, look, I don't really care if people pay for food for me or not. I don't. I don't demand that people pay for food. If you want to pay for my food, if you don't want to pay for my food, I'm not offended. Um, I think the only way I'd get offended is, say I say, no, I don't want fish and chips, but you bought it for me anyway and said you have to eat, you have to eat. It would really highly depend on the situation and it would depend on why I'm offended in the first place. Most of the time... If I don't want something, it's because I really don't want something and I'd rather have something else. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much if I say, no, I don't want a meal. Just don't, like, get me a meal anyway and shove it in my face. <laughs> Force me to eat something I don't want. <laughs> oh, God, just don't do that. Otherwise, yeah, whatever. Don't pay for a meal or do pay for a meal. I don't really care. The only time I don't want you paying for food, absolutely not, is if I'm truly not hungry for a meal or I just want to make a sandwich at home, I don't want Uber, then I really don't want you to pay for something I don't want. But if I say, yeah, I would like something from Uber, I was considering making a sandwich, but no, nah, I'd rather have something from Uber. Well, okay, whatever. <laughs> However the meal gets to the door, it's going to turn up eventually and I'll get something, you know. Um, I always go by the motto, if you don't ask me what I want, I'm assuming that you're not getting me anything. I don't care if people ask me or don't ask me. I don't really give a shit, you know, because I know that if I want something, I'll buy it or I'll make something at home. It can't be that difficult. And if people end up spending money because they just enjoy buying me food, well, good, do it. Do it then. <laughs> you know, it's up to you. Your money, do what you want with it. Everyone does what they want with their own money. Um, 
if you really want me to pay you back, can you request that I pay you back? And if you don't want me to pay you back, then don't even worry about asking me to pay you back. If you don't want me to, then I'll just assume you didn't ask, I won't pay you. Because I'll just pay you back otherwise. Then people will be forever saying, no, you don't have to pay me. No, you... And it will sound like a broken record, like, I already know that I don't have to pay you. Jesus, I just want to. So, like, rather than all that stupid confusion, just request if you want the money. If you don't request, I won't give it to you. If you do request it, I will give it to you. That way I know in my mind, someone said, can I have the money back? I need it back. Okay. If someone doesn't say anything, then, oh, well, whatever. Problem is, what if people forget to ask me to pay them? And then next week they say, oh, I forgot to ask you to pay me back for that meal last week. Can you pay me back? It's like, uh, you didn't tell me till today. Whoops. Fuck, why didn't you tell me last week you forgot? Well, then I'd be a bit confused, but still it's like, whatever, you know? So, yeah. I'm pretty much letting people know, do what they want to do with regards to meal times and having get-togethers and meals and that. Um, I love to share food to people if it's not, like, demanding, like, you have to give me a meal because you're helping me and I'll help you. Like, really? Come on, guys. I don't have to do nothing. It's like I'm helping someone out this afternoon. I'm helping them use their cooking equipment to do a meal for them. Now, I don't have a problem because it's not on demand. It's just a, oh, well, we're talking about making mistakes when we cook. Do you want me to help you? I don't have a problem. I have plenty of time after after 3.30. I've got all the time in the world to help. If I didn't want to, I probably wouldn't even offer. I'd probably find excuses not to help. I'd have every reason not to be available. <sighs> That's very different from just demanding. Oh, you must help me because I need you. It's like, really? Okay, right, so yeah, big difference there guys, so don't worry about it for a week, please don't worry about it, <laughs> it's just things that are on my chest that I'm getting off my chest to clarify things, so don't, you know, like, get too alarmed or anxious if you can help it or whatever, if anyone hears this recording, it's just things I'm trying to clarify and everything is fucking fine. All good, guys. All well and good. It's fucking Jonathan. I'm going to rant about him now. It's fucking Jono who is the pesky one. He's a fucking pest. A bloody fucking pest. And that other lady, Karen, she's a fucking pest as well. Um, I hate it when she just says things like as though she's trapping me in bloody, I feel forced into accepting something I don't have to accept. Like, you know, she has to say, oh, well, I might come over for a while. It's not, can I come over or are you free to have visitors? It's just, oh, well, I might come over for a while. Like, how demanding is that? How fucking demanding? <sighs> then there's fucking Jono. He's one of those people that if you give him an inch, he's going to take a mile. 
And I don't know how many people listen to these YouTube recordings, but anyway, anyone could listen to them, so I'll just talk as though anybody could be listening, because I know some of these people who listen already know what I'm likely to say. They think it's old news. It's annoying. Well, I'm not ranting for them to... Even if they did listen again, that's fine. But I'm not ranting as if they don't know. Because I know that some people know what I'm talking about. It's other people who haven't heard my rants that may or may not listen to YouTube. I don't know. But for any newcomers or anyone that has decided to take a listen to my channel, well, you'll get to find out what I'm saying what you know my neighbors are like when i'm talking about them but yeah um jonathan is a fucking oh. he's he is terrible if i go to the park with my other couple of other neighbors Jono has to follow us and talk to us in the park. He can't keep his ears and his mouth out. He cannot butt out of everybody else's business. He has to dig his nose where it isn't wanted. He has to stick his nose into everyone else's business. So I can't even go to the park with neighbours anymore because he'll stick his nose in and want to talk and that. And he's one of those people that if you say you're not invited to our conversation or I don't want you to come to the park or whatever, he will do it anyway. He doesn't care. If you say, yes, you can come to the park, all good. If you say, no, you're not coming, you're not invited, he will still come uninvited. He'll still come to the park uninvited so you can't tell him no because he doesn't respect you for saying no and if you try to avoid Jono He's one of these people that you cannot go out of your own home without him nosing in to what you're doing. Like, you don't have to talk to him, you don't have to do nothing. He will still find a way to mind everyone else's business instead of his own business. He will still find a way to figure out what everyone's up to, even if you're not talking to him. So, if you're waiting for a taxi, he'll come and watch you wait for a taxi, watch you get in quietly without talking, so then he can tell everyone else what you got up to. And like, I know what he's like, because I've, I've been around the place for three years now. He will tell people that, yeah, he sees people getting in and out of taxis, doesn't always talk to them, but he can see people, what they're doing. And he lets people know that they're sitting quietly at the taxi rank, that, you know, you didn't have a conversation with him, whatever. That's what he's like. He tells everybody everything that goes on with other people. You don't even have to talk to him and he will gossip about you. You know, like, 
John will gossip about people when they're not talking to him. Jonathan doesn't need you to talk to him to gossip about you. All he needs is that when you're not in your own home, I could talk about him all day. When you're not in your own home, all he needs is to see you out and about, say hello to you, you, of course you keep going, you don't respond, you just keep walking or you just sit there and don't say anything. And he'll go and tell everybody, oh, I saw so-and-so today and they weren't talking and I said hello but they were quiet, went in the taxi and he'll even go as far as saying, I thought I heard them talking about going to Fairfield Gardens or, you know, I thought I heard them saying something about um, Vision Australia or something about getting fish and chips or something about going to Carindale or going to a concert next week. You know, things like that. Anything could be an example. If you're getting into the taxi and you know Jono's around, he won't be talking or he might have said hello but then he doesn't say anything else. Sometimes he won't say hello. You have to hope to God he's not there eavesdropping on you because he'll go and tell everyone what you did, what you said, what you looked like, where you were. <sighs> I'm not exaggerating, unfortunately. I know what he's like. The only safety that you've got is in your own home where he can't see you or hear you. And even then you've got to be careful in case he's listening through the wall, you know, through the door. He could be standing at your door you don't even know he's at your door. Not that you'll be opening your door all day just to see that he's not there. That's what he hopes for. He hopes that people will not be opening and closing their doors all day to see that he's not there because then he can secretly listen to people. He can sneak up to your door any time he wants to and I wouldn't even know he's there unless I checked all day long and said, hey, I can hear you sneaking around, go away. I can't and I won't do that. When I get my new support worker with guide dogs, because I already know this bloke, he's been around for a while, he's pretty good. But when he becomes my support worker, he'll be able to see what happens and say, sure, someone's at your door there listening, be, be quiet. It's like, oh my God, why should I have to? to bother about people eavesdropping at the door. You know, a couple of years ago, and I'm not going into details, um, there are a couple of people who know what basically happened, but I suffered from a few things that caused a number of health issues that are now fixed, thank God. I called the ambulance people one night because I wasn't feeling good, as in I wasn't feeling well. I had issues in the nether area, and if you don't fix that on time, you get feverish, you get chills, you get... It feels like getting a cold, but it's different from getting a cold. And your nether, re and your nether region gets sore and there could be a hundred reasons for why that happens and if you don't know what you're dealing with it might just go away on its own or it could get worse and turn into like chills fever feeling sick feeling like you know that you're sure that you know that you're not getting better on your own it's like a sensation that your body knows that you need help it's really weird it's like today how I am a bit run down in my voice. Like, 
you know, a bit yuck. But it's not like, oh, I'm not going to recover. I'm, oh, I need help. I need help right now. It just feels like I need rest. I can go out, but I need a bit of rest as well. Like, I don't want to do too much. I'm hoping that won't impact me for Saturday's self-defence class. But I think if I, you know, I should be all right. It's just one of those things that you like, you need a rest. And by the time a few days goes by, you're actually pretty good. Like, you know, it's not that bad. It isn't so bad that suddenly your life is on hold and you're screwed. Um, so, yeah, you can really tell when your body knows that you are not getting better from this without medical attention, without medical help. Anyway, the paramedics turned up and they rang the house doctors and the house doctors said ring the ambulance and the ambulance said we're here and the house doctors said did the ambulance turn up and the paramedics and the house doctors had a bit of a fight because they were tell the house doctors were telling the medics why didn't Michelle ring the ambulance? Well, yes, you did. They're here. The doctors were a bit dodgy. I think they were stressed because the medics are saying, oh, she just needs a house doctor. The house doctor's saying, no, you need her to go to the hospital. And they're going, well, she isn't well, but she's not sick enough to go to hospital. Treat her. And the doctor's saying, nope, Michelle called the ambulance. Take her away. And they're going, we can, but she's not sick enough. She's not well but she'll be okay with medical treatment without us. She's scared, so we came because she's right, she's sick, but we can't take a sick person away if they're well enough to have treatment at home without hospital care. They can come and say, look, we know you're not well, but we don't think you're unwell enough for us to take you away. Is that all right? It's like, well, I thought I was, but fair enough. If I don't need to go to the hospital, I feel like I've wasted time. But you know what? It's better that I waste a bit of time and find out that I'm okay than not ring up and get really, 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 really sick. <sighs> so with that point aside, um, before the ambulance rang the house doctors, and ever since then the doctors have made sure that I haven't gotten sick enough to ring triple zero because... Sometimes you can ring triple O with odd symptoms that you know aren't good. And they'll say that you're right. You're not just pretending or faking, lying, wasting time. Because what if it's truly a life-threatening emergency and you don't ring them up, you'll die. You know, or you'll end up worse off than you were. You know, if you get triple O because you know you're not well but you know how you usually cope when you're sick and this time it's horrible and this time you know that oh I'm not usually like this when I'm not well oh my god well sometimes you like I'll ring the house doctors they might tell me to ring the ambulance oh fuck it I'll ring them that's all they're going to do is come out and say you don't need to go to the hospital that's all they need to do but anyway, I've explained my situation to quite a few medical people. So now that they know what I'm up against with every new and old situation that flares up, luckily the old situation is better. <sighs> yes. But yeah, before I go on a tangent, the doctors have made sure that I'm not getting sick enough. I don't totally never get sick. I still pick up colds and I still suffer from flu symptoms after I get the flu needle. I suffer from flu symptoms. <sighs> I get chest, little chest infection thingies like, you know, like little viruses that fuck up my chest for a couple of weeks. You know, get a um, rattly, croaky voice. Um, different seasonal crappy bloody things. <clears throat> that most of the time are just, yeah, whatever, I feel a bit crappy, but it doesn't matter, I can still go out, I just won't do too much today, but I'm okay, I'm fine. Most of the time, you're okay. Once a year or every other year, I'm as sick as a dog, 
for three weeks, sometimes only two weeks, thank God. Um, once in a blue moon, every other year, I'm like, oh shit. But most of the time, no, I'm fine, whatever. Who cares, you know? Um, and the doctors are making sure that I'm not getting sick enough to call ambulance. Um, which is good, because then I don't have to worry about the house doctors or triple zero. Don't have to worry about it. Unless it's like really horrible. Like if someone has to go to the hospital and I happen to be involved somehow, such as like talking to the person and then I have a huge panic attack, pretend pretend that I'm not worried. Just sit there like, no, I'm fine, but I'm not being honest about feeling horrible. So I sit there pretending to be okay. Then maybe... <clears throat> the medical people who turn up for the other person can um, take them away to where they need to go, to their ambulance, whatever. Make sure that I can survive on my own. If I can't survive, then I'll have to go away as well, of course. <sighs> but if I can survive, I can ring up my doctor any time I want to ring them up to go there. I would do that if I knew I could survive but I wasn't well, I'd go to the doctors. If I know I can survive but I'm not really sick, really horrible, just a bit crappy, like a bit shitty crappy, but I'm fine, whatever. Um, I can survive, so just who cares, you know. Um, otherwise, I'm fine. I'm all right. Um... But yes, what happened was, before the paramedics rang the house doctors, the next door neighbour who lived in the unit at the time, next door to me, she came and eavesdropped on what they were saying. And the paramedics said, oh, look, I think there's someone at your door. And she said it in a cranky tone that sounded like she wasn't happy for the neighbour and a few other neighbours to eavesdrop on me because it was night time and a few people heard the ambulance turn up and some people decided to eavesdrop instead of just minding their own business they'd come to the door and eavesdrop and the paramedics didn't like that <coughs> so she said in a stern tone oh I think someone's at your door listening to us at your door and I went, mm, and then I stayed really quiet. Like, why would you go to the neighbour's door and listen in on what the doctors are telling the neighbour when it's none of your fucking business in the first place? Unless you're visiting your neighbour and they get sick, then you have to get involved in helping them out. Mind your fucking business. And when you hear an ambulance or a doctor turn up or whatever... Don't sneak up to the door and listen unless you're already inside their unit talking and that when it all happens. If you weren't involved from the start, mind your fucking business, you know. So, yeah. Um, yeah, some things that happen here are shocking, man. Absolutely shocking. But anyway, um, anyhow, I um, got rid of all those problems and that. And now the pharmacy people are checking on other issues that they're only virus issues and not worse off, not worse and worse or anything like that which I don't care if they do because they're meant to anyway. Some people need more help than other people. That is just how it is. You know, it's part of bloody living, you know. Um, but I'm fine, so whatever. Mm. 
Um, but yeah, the fact that neighbours who never were involved in helping me that just turn up to the door and have to eavesdrop without me hearing them eavesdropping. I know my new support workers at Guide Dogs will never tolerate that. They won't. They won't tolerate it. They won't tolerate that shit. They would never tolerate people eavesdropping like that. Um, someone that I do speak to very regularly. Um, if the support worker knows that I speak to people regularly and they turn up and bang on the door and say, oh, are you free? Am I allowed to say a quick hello? I know you'll be busy all this week. It depends on who the neighbour is because some people are like, no, you can't. And other people, it's like, yeah, okay, um, I have to go out in a few minutes, but yeah, um, this is my new support work and that. <sighs> but yeah, that's what I do, really. I'd um, just um, let some people in, say a quick hello, and then look, got to kick you out, I'm going. <laughs> but with Jonathan, oh God, you've got to be careful that he's not eavesdropping under the door. Because... He may never stand at your door, as in being my door or anyone else's doors around here, but then he might. And he's a very sneaky, crafty person. He is very crafty. Be careful of him. And you can't say too much when you're outside, because he will listen and eavesdrop and not... You, you don't know that he's eavesdropping just because he does. He can eavesdrop quietly. He'll be talking. He'll be walking off and you'll be like, shit, I just heard Jono walking around and I never knew he was there for the whole entire time listening to us. You ought to be careful what you say around everyone outside because... If Jonathan's eavesdropping, he isn't going to make an announcement or warn you that he's there. He's just going to be sneaking around. And if he hears something that he can tell on, tell everyone about you, he will. He's not going to say, hello, I just heard what you said and I'm going to tell everyone. He doesn't do that. He just goes and tells everybody. So be careful what you say, because he might be around to eavesdrop on you. <coughs> And if you're getting into a taxi, that interests him. He'll go and tell everyone, I saw so-and-so get into a taxi. And if you don't want him to know where you're going, don't say anything until you shut the door of the taxi and drive off because you don't know if Jono is listening. He is an absolute fucking pest. The only safety you've got is in your own home when you're hoping that he's not eavesdropping you through the door, eavesdropping on you through the door, if he's not sneaking around listening to everyone's conversation, which apparently he's done that in the past, so I'd be really careful of him. So your safety is more likely in your own home or when you walk away from the units and totally make sure he's not around, then you're safe. You know, he's not going to cause any trouble. So yeah, he um, is a troublemaker, so you totally got to avoid Jono altogether and 
I can't associate with some neighbours anymore because of what Jono does. He invites himself where he's not wanted. And I don't want to mix with other people in case Jono... In case Jono notices that I'm mixing with other people and then he invites himself where he's not wanted. And if you say anything like, fuck off Jono, go away, we, we didn't invite you, piss off, he will go and complain about it. <coughs> I'm getting to the point where I'm likely to just say, well, go right ahead and complain, Jono. I've told you to fuck off, you're not invited. Go and complain as much as you want. I don't give a shit. You're the one being a pest, so piss off. That's what I'm getting to the point that I'm going to say. Like, Jono just doesn't have any fucking boundaries and he's stinks like shit. He's a pain in the ass. His hygiene is next to nothing and is absolutely horrendous. <laughs> He's horrendous. You know. Um, he, uh, he's just a fucking, um, nosy parker. He can't even mind his own business and he, uh, you know, when you tell him something he doesn't like, the first thing he does is pretend to be deaf. He just pretends to be deaf. He acts like he didn't hear you when he did. And then when you tell him, don't ignore, ignore, don't ignore me, you're just pretending to be deaf, you freaking tart. You're a piece of shit and you know it. He just walks off like, oh, I didn't hear that. And then he has the guts to say, not like recently or anything, but, you know, a few weeks ago, he had the guts and the audacity to say, I don't like it when people say things that upsets me. Because he knows they're getting up him and he doesn't like it. I don't just mean getting up him over something he didn't do wrong. You know, like if he does something wrong and people say, I tell him off... Then he says, oh, I don't like it when you say rah, 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 like you'll demonstrate something and then you'll say that upsets me. It's like, well, stop doing what people don't like and they won't upset you. Stop doing it. I absolutely hate Jono. I wish he would just blow up and disappear. He's absolute tart he shits everywhere too you know shits all over his unit his unit always stinks he's absolutely disgusting he wheezes and sits all over his unit it is gross can't believe that a stinking tart would be allowed to live here like that He's disgusting. His old stepfather contribute to it, contributes to it too. They are both horrible people. Anyway, that's my rant about him. He's absolutely disgusting. And my question is, and I get in trouble for saying this to the doctors... 
How can you put up with him? And the doctors don't like to hear that. Well, it's true though. How can anyone put up with him? I just about feel like spewing up when I smell the scent of his dirty, stinking ass as he walks around that complex and that smell travels wherever he goes. You can smell where he's been. It is disgusting. I walk outside and I can get a whiff of shit and body odor and I'm like, yeah, Jonathan's been out there recently. He stinks. He's probably not there. But his smell is there. And if his smell is really, really, really strong, I know he's hanging around somewhere. Because the smell travels. If he's not there, the smell stays around for hours. And when he is there, it is really strong. It's stronger than when he's not there. If you know what I mean. He is disgusting. absolutely shocking and I don't know how any medical people can tolerate him oh god when I sit well when I sat in the ambulance in 2017 after the fire so they could check me over and that I couldn't stand the smell in the ambulance too it smelt like bloody shit and spew and sweat and everything I nearly spewed up when I was in there Yuck. And the medics think I'm fucking judgmental. And I'm like, well, no, I'm not judgmental. You just don't want to accept that I'm telling the bloody truth. Fucking stinks. Because a lot of people don't wash themselves. And it's fair enough if people are out working and they're dirty and stinky from work and the ambulance picks them up, they can't have any control over that. I'm just thinking of the people who don't have a shower who aren't very hygienic and the ambulance still has to pick him up. Ugh, that's gross. Absolutely disgusting. Oh, it's horrendous. And I'm supposedly judgmental because I'm worried about getting an infection off whoever was there last could have spread infections into the ambulance and am I going to get sick from it? Well, I'm not being judgmental. I'm being fucking honest, man. Just because these paramedics are used to dealing with this every day doesn't mean that I have to be okay with it. God, fuck. I'm just being truthful about that. I don't feel okay with it. Doesn't mean the medical people aren't used to it. I just don't feel okay with it and it's sad that they can't accept that. Oh, you're judging too much. Everyone has their own life. It's like, well, I'm not judging. Some people live wrong. You can live right, you can live wrong. And, oh, that's not, there's no right and wrong. It's like, there is fucking right and wrong. There is so. Oh, you shouldn't be cranky all the time. It's not good for you. Well, if I want to be cranky, I'll be cranky. It's my decision if I want to be cranky or happy. It's no one else's fucking business. If you don't like it, You don't have to talk to me. You don't have to come near me if you don't like how I live or how how I am. Don't come near me then. Not the people that are listening to my recordings, not you. It's just generally if I get judged, well, okay. If someone judges me, I'm just going to say, look, if you don't like how I am, you don't have to have anything to do with me. That's what I mean. And then the doctors take it all, oh, you're a mean bitch. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to lie to you. (sighs) I'm supposed to be more friendly so that people like me. Well, I don't want to be more friendly. I don't need people to like me. If I needed people to like me, I'd be looking for people to like me. Um... It's not up to other people what I feel, how I feel, what I want in my life. It's up to me. 
If I want people to like me, I'll make sure they like me. But I'm not going to get the blame if someone doesn't like me and then I'm supposed to change to suit their expectations. No, you either like me for who I am or don't have anything to do with me. I'm not going to change how I am to make other people happy. Unless it's like a legal fixture like... I deal with people the way I deal with them, but sometimes that's illegal because I'm not a policeman and, you know, I get told not to act like a policeman because I'm not one. And I'm like, well, I'm my own master of my own destiny. I'll do what I like. And so some things can break the law. So it's like you have to sort of change how you behave in public or around other people so you don't break the law, and that's fine. But where I'm not breaking the law where I'm not causing any trouble for, like, shopkeepers or security or whatever, where the law, where, you know, what your jobs are, like what your um, job is regarding dealing with people versus how the police deal with people, so where all that's concerned, you can break the law, right? But wherever the law is not concerned, such as how I choose to live my life, how I talk to people and treat people in general without actually trying to... Minus 15, pause. Minus 3 point. So, yeah, where the law... Minus 14.580440B. Speech off. Sorry, I got a missed call. Um, and then, the, then it hung up, so who cares? Um, so, yeah, um, where just general treatment of people is concerned, I'll live however I like, you know, but where the law is concerned, if I have to make changes to not break the law, then maybe I will, but then that that really depends on my situation as well. Um, I'm not actually supposed to take people on, when when they're fighting with me, I'm not supposed to take them on and finish the fight because I'm not a police officer and, um, I don't have the right weapons to stop people from hurting me if they want to hurt me. They can hurt the police too, but police can call for backup. Police have got radios. Police have got a taser gun. They've even got a loaded, you know, loaded service gun if they need it for deadly force and that. I don't have any of that. So because I don't have police officer training, if I take the law into my own hands... Um, I do um, settle it before it goes to court as self-defence so then I don't get charged with assault but then it's really hard for everyone else because they have to prove that I didn't commit assault that I self-defended rather than committed a crime you know they have to prove who attacked who first why did I attack back or was it an attack or self-defence that has to be proven before it gets to court, otherwise I'll have to take it to the judge and tell them what happened, which means I can get charged for assault and then in court the judge can, the judge or the jury can clear the charges. So then I, just because the police lay charges on you doesn't mean that you're guilty of a crime, it just means that they consider you guilty of a crime. But in a court of law, when you're in court, you're innocent until they can prove you're guilty. So police lay charges on you for doing something wrong, but according to law, you're probably not guilty. It's just the policeman's opinion of you is very judgmental and very... They can consider you guilty until proven innocent, but they're not allowed to consider you guilty according to court of law. So according to the actual law, they can claim you as guilty of breaking the law but they're not allowed to consider you guilty. They just have to presume that you're guilty. Because <sighs> a lot of people are judgmental. So the police can presume you as guilty. They're not allowed to say that you're legally guilty because you're not legally guilty of a crime. They just have evidence that you've committed a crime. Was it a crime or was it self-defence? And usually um, 
the people that I go after aren't going to press charges on me anyway because they know they have to prove that they did nothing wrong, which is usually very difficult when they've done something wrong in the first place. So then that gets thrown out without going to court straight away that, you know, if you're too scared to press charges on me, what are you doing wrong? And I'm talking about people who can see, by the way. If you're blind, it's really hard. If you can see properly and you say, no, I'm not pressing charges, then you've probably done something wrong. Or in rare cases, maybe you just don't want to press charges to give someone else a chance to to change or whatever they think. But basically, um, I'm not very scared of the police because I just go after people to defend myself. I don't just go after people aimlessly. Um, police aren't going to do anything to me any- anyway. Police won't and can't because I don't do anything illegally. So if someone takes me to court, I can just say, well, I was sitting on the train reading a book and someone disturbed me while I was reading and I told them off, you know, said, leave me alone, I'm trying to read my book. Um, and um, I wasn't left alone, so I did what I did because otherwise I wasn't going to be left alone and I felt that I was being harassed. So I did what I did to, to stop the harassment. And I didn't want it to escalate into a life-threatening life-threatening situation. So, of course, I do what I have to do. And then I go back to reading my book. Because, you know, I'm only interested in reading um, when I'm sitting on the train. That's all I care to do is read or chit-chat if anybody wants to talk, you know. Um, but once it becomes harassment then I don't want it to continue so um, that's the first thing I'd say and uh, you know as for the police well I don't think I need the police I can deal with myself I can stick up for myself without police but with that said it's really difficult because people have to work out who attacked who and everything. Um, whereas if I don't do anything and the police get involved and I do do nothing, then the other person ends up with all the blame because I've done nothing at all. Mind you, when I do do something, I don't end up getting blamed in the end because it's like I haven't done anything wrong. <sighs> Apart from scream at a few people who thought they could take advantage of me and scare a few people, put the fear of God into some people. And then the next week I go back to the train stations and people couldn't be nice enough to me. (laughs) So that's the way I deal with things. And if I'm meant to let security guards handle it just because it's easier for them to get off, you know, um... If they have to defend themselves and they're on duty, it's easier for them to go to court than it is for me to go to court. Because they can go to court and say that they were on duty when they saw all these things happen and they had to defend themselves because they were being attacked. Because the judge knows that a security guard on duty, unless he's corrupt or whatever, which can happen and they can get in trouble. But a... um, good security guard on duty isn't just going to smack someone in the face when they get like if they get assaulted the first thing security guards going to do is get up and say oi what are you doing that for and if it continues then then they'll um go off their tree and cause trouble for them for the attackers but you don't usually see a security guard smacking someone in the face because they heard something wrong or whatever. So if I get on the train and someone harasses me and a security guard pushes them off the train, it's easier for them to go to court to prove that it was an assault. It wasn't an assault thing because they pushed the person off the train because they how dangerous they were and the security guard has more training than I have. But that doesn't really go down with me either because... I have less training than a security guard. 
I just stick up for myself and say, oh, I'm protecting myself and I don't need to be harassed while I'm bloody reading. How hard is that to understand? So no one sent me to court over that or got the coppers to talk to me over that. So, um... That just goes to show that if you protect yourself properly and you have something that you're already doing before you protect yourself, you're not going to get in trouble. And if you do and you tell a judge, uh, excuse me, if I'm sitting down reading a book, what does that tell you? No, I didn't just go after someone just because I felt like yelling at someone. I was reading a book and got disturbed. What do you think I'm supposed to do about it? Sit back and do nothing? No. What's the judge likely to do? Throw it out. Dismiss the case. Send the person off to jail if it's criminal enough. That's where they're going. Good. See you later. Never have to deal with them again. If I don't go to court, I'll never deal with that person ever again because they're too scared that next time it's going to end up with them in jail or they might already go to jail because... I don't have to go to court to send someone to jail. I can just go and go to guide dogs and do my own thing and the person gets arrested just because their behaviour is so fucking dangerous that they don't even need other people to testify about them unless you want to. They can see it on fucking camera for God's sake. They can tell what goes on because it gets recorded on the trains as well. And then they've got plenty of security staff to stick up for you and just say that you're minding your own business. You don't need to, you know, they don't need to see other people bothering passengers. That's enough to send someone off to jail if the violence is bad enough. So, yeah. I'm most likely never going to see my attackers ever again. And then if I do, they're in fucking trouble next time. Because I tell you what, they're in fucking lots of trouble if they come back at me. Which is not going to happen because it usually um, doesn't. They're too stupid and too too cowardly to want to wanna come back at you after they find out what you like. They're like, oh, we won't go after this person again. They're too much to deal with. Well, you know, good. Hopefully, you know, people figure out that causing trouble doesn't help anybody. But anyway, Jono was also a troublemaker, so I make sure I have nothing to do with him. I make sure I have nothing to do with him. Nothing. I make sure I have absolutely nothing to do with Jono. If he tries to talk to me, it's just like, yeah, whatever. And then I'm going to do what he does to me. You know, when he pretends to be deaf and that, he just doesn't speak to me. As soon, see, he's one of these people that talks to you on his own terms. Like, you'll be talking. And as soon as he wants to stop talking to you, he doesn't say, I've got to go or this or that. He just stops. And you could be talking all day and he won't say a word. He just decides when he will talk and when he won't talk. And wild horses will not make him talk. If he doesn't want to talk, he will not speak. He doesn't care if you're having a conversation with him or not. If he doesn't want to be part of the conversation anymore, he just goes quiet and leaves you hanging. He doesn't care that you're waiting for a response or that you're still having that conversation. He just sits there like, so we've been talking about what, you know, whatever it is. He's had enough of the conversation. He just either totally changes the subject without any any warning at all 
or just does not speak to you and treats you like you don't exist. And what does he do when we treat him, you know, when I treat him like that? Gets all angry and complains and everything. So now I'm treating him like he doesn't exist. Like he does not exist. He's a fucking tart and I don't know how anyone could put up with him. I do not know how anyone can deal with him. So, yeah, that's my rant over, and I can't wait to do more cooking. I can't wait. I might even do a recording of it. There's heaps of other meals that I have to eat as well, so, God, I have to go between cooking and eating my meals too. Hmm. Yes. Well. Anyway, I'm going to get off this recording, so I will talk to you later. Oh, yeah, I could be doing baking while I'm... Rec- oh, yes, that's right. I, I, I'm i going to do some baking. I can't do it this afternoon because I'm going to help someone out with their cooking. Don't be upset and say, oh, I didn't know you wanted to do... No, 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 no. Just stop. I can do baking whenever I want to do baking. If I want to do baking this afternoon, but I also want to help people, I'm not just going to say... Mm, fuck off, I'm going to do my own thing, I don't need to help you, stuff you, do it yourself. Nope, if it was Jonathan, yeah, of course I'd say that. Of course, why wouldn't I say that? If it was Wayne or Jono, yeah, I'm doing what I want to do, (sighs) I don't care. If it's anyone else, hey, baking isn't running away, the butter isn't running away, the cake mix isn't going to get out of the cupboard and run off on its own accord, unless it's in Harry Potter land it might, but at the moment it is not about to run off and go somewhere and start telling everybody, hey everybody's trying to eat me, you know, it's not going to do that anytime soon unless you're in Harry Potter land, (laughs) but seriously, I want to do baking. I can do baking any time this week. Doesn't mean I won't do any baking. It just means that I can either... I can either do some baking and then help the neighbour. Or I can help the neighbour and then do some baking. I don't have to do baking in any particular order. And I can even do it tonight. Why do I have to do it this afternoon when I can do it tonight? Or I can ask the neighbour, do you want me to help you tonight or are you hungry now? If they're hungry, help them. If they're not, help them tonight. (sighs) I'd much rather help the neighbours get their meal sorted so that I can then ask, would you like to come over and watch me do some baking? If you don't, that's great. If if you do, even better. (laughs) No, (laughs) seriously, I'd rather help the neighbour so they know they can have a good feed for dinner and they're not eating at nine o'clock at night because who wants to eat late when they want to go to bed not that it would matter if that's how some people think and that's great but I'm not going to put people off just so I can do whatever I want to do if I know that I've agreed that I want to help them you know that's pretty mean and selfish to just say oh well I've decided I'd rather do my own thing than help someone. Uh, Just because that's how I... just That's just what I want to do. I don't really care. Like, oh my God. What the freak, you know? Anyway, I'm going to be doing some baking at some point. Doesn't matter when. I don't care if it's tonight. I don't care if it's tomorrow. I'll be doing baking at some point. And I'm going to put it on recording. 
Um, so yeah, it's going to be fucking amazing. I'm going to have a look at all those recipes. And then I'm going to decide which ones I want to make. Um, and then go from there. I have to work out what ingredients though I've got in the cupboard because some of them require cream of tartar and I don't have that. Or do I? I need to find out. I think I might have it but I can't remember. I know I've got coconut. I know I've got jam. I've got caster sugar, white sugar. Oh damn, do I have any brown sugar? I don't know. I've got syrup, I've got honey. Do I have honey? I think I might have. Anyway, I need to check what stuff I've got in the fridge. Compare it to the ingredients list on the recipes, which I'm going to do on recording just to be interesting, just to be fun, just so there's no whinging and no dramas and no negative shit on here. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm mucking around but yeah um, I um, want to be interesting and check out my recipe books on recording and let you know which ones I'd like to make oh I think I've got dates there too oh I could make a bloody date loaf mmm yum mmm mmm yeah, we'll have to see what I can make from the ingredients in my cupboard. It'll take a while, but ah, yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be very fun. I need to get icing sugar. I need to get icing sugar. That'll be happening. Um, oh, it will be fun to do some baking um, these um, recipes have old scales like ounces, pounds gallons yards, whatever so the imperial stuff instead of metric measurement oh well and they also don't tell you exact times so they'll say um, as step 5 or step 6 or step 10 however many steps there are one of the steps will literally be to put in a 180 degree celsius oven until golden brown well how long does that take to go golden brown <sighs> that's the problem you then have to time it and smell the food if it's got a strong smell you've got to check the oven and if it's overcooked it'll burn if it's undercooked you have to put in for another minute or two and then say you put something in for eight minutes but it needs another two minutes but it's been in there for say eight and a half minutes then you got to do another minute and a half so that's nine minutes that's about ten minutes then so eight and a half minutes then plus one minute that's nine and a half minutes so you've got to really be careful when you're timing stuff that if you haven't put something in long enough then you add on another 30 or 60 seconds maybe 120 seconds maybe three minutes you've then got to calculate the original time which say it's seven minutes say you put something in the oven for seven minutes then you've got to calculate how much extra time is added on. So say you, oh, I need to put this in for another four minutes. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That means next time you put something in the oven, it has to be in there for eleven minutes because ten minutes won't be long enough. Eleven minutes will be just right, and twelve minutes or even an extra thirty seconds can mean the difference between burning the food or having a good baked snack so you got to be really precise with time May, maybe not to the second but definitely to the minutes so you know if you've calculated how much time need needs taking to do those biscuits then you got to write that down somewhere so that you don't forget for next time because 
Something could take exactly 15 minutes or it could take 14 minutes and 35 seconds exactly. Or even 14 minutes, 30 seconds. It could be exactly 14 minutes. It could be 20 minutes. It could be 30 minutes. It could be 2 minutes. Usually not 2 minutes in the oven, but, you know, it could be less time than the recipe recommends. If something says put it in for 10 minutes, you may only need it in there for 9 minutes or 8 minutes. So, yeah. Yeah, you have to be pretty precise with when you do things in the oven because if you do it too much, you stuff up your meal or your baked goods. And, um, you know, when you stuff things up, yeah, it's fucked. Absolutely fucked. Absolutely fucked. So, and then if you do under the amount of time and it's undercooked, at least you can add on some time. If you cook it too much, you can't subtract the time and say, I'll reverse cooking too much to make it cook right. You can't reverse it, but you can add on. So that's what I get taught from the OT, which is awesome. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here because I've done plenty of ranting and fucking talking about everything so yeah yes um hopefully everyone is having a good one um and i'll talk to you all later when i do some baking speech on step iphone micro minus iphone step file list but record file list pause Stop. Button.